Welcome to Weld.com. I'm Paul, your host, and today we'll be talking about MIG welding thin gauge material. I will demonstrate on 14 gauge carbon steel. For those of you that will ask how thick is 14 gauge? Well, 14 gauge is mm, 0.075 of an inch in decimals and 564 in fractions, which in my book and my past experiences is thin gauge material. I consider any material eighth inch, which is 0.125 of an inch thick, or you can go through the 14, 16, 18, 20, all the way up to 24 gauge thin material. I'm used to welding heavy wall steam headers and power plants and refineries that material is up to six inch thick. So when welding thin gauge material, you have to use different consumables. Smaller diameter wire, tips, rollers, along with all the changing your welding technique. I will talk more about the technique during the demonstrations on three welding joints, a lap joint, a corner joint and a T-joint. And I'm not talking about making these code textbook picture-perfect welds like on a quarter inch thick and thicker material, steel or stainless or something. This is thin carbon steel material is a different animal when it comes to welding thin gauge material. You need to stock up on a truckload of patience because you're definitely gonna need them. So like I mentioned earlier in the video, you know, technique's a lot different than welding some thick structural steel like this, you know, and just consistently welding on the piece and welding on the piece. Thin gauge material, you know, if you don't have a good fit up, then, you know, you're going to experience a lot of warping, blow through, melting, just all sorts of headaches. So, you know, getting a good fit up doesn't guarantee you good welding results all the time. So if you don't take your time, make sure your tacks are close together. While welding your piece, make sure you're jumping around the piece so you're not putting all the heat in one area. You know, then of course, letting the piece cool off in between your tacks. You know, thin gauge material is used in a lot of different varieties of stuff like ornamental iron, barbecue grills, replacement panels in cars and trucks, patch holes and skin casing, you know, which I call a Band-Aid. You know, mainly things that don't hold a lot of weight or pressure. That's what we use thin gauge material for. So first I'll demonstrate a corner joint. So we're using the Everlast Storm 215C, and it's a very universal machine. It does flux core and stick and plasma cutting. So we're using it for the 75, 25 solid core wire. So we'll go, we'll go to the wire, what we're going to use today. And it's the Vulcan from Harbor Freight, believe it or not. Some good stuff. And of course, you know, 11 pound spool, 70S6 solid core wire, 0 0.025 diameter. What we're going to do now, we're going to go through the settings. We're going to use the power set settings to see how it comes up. And I'll start out with them. And if it welds good, I'll leave them there. If not, I'll tweak the perimeters go up or down, see what we need to do. So, you know, when you're welding this thin material, you know, you need to watch your perimeters and not weld too hot because you will get blow through. It's fixable, but it's a lot easier to have your perimeter set right on a practice piece before you do any kind of blow through or melt through like you see here. So we got set on 14 gauge, which we have 14 gauge material. And it says we're gonna have 16.8 volts at 155 inches per minute. So we'll get started there. And of course it's set on wire diameter. It doesn't have, it's got a 023 setting and a 030 setting. So we'll start at the 023, even though we're burning 025 today and see how it welds. And for the gas mixture, we're gonna be using 7525 today. So as you see, we have the corner joint prepped and tacked up. So I got four tacks on it. And you can use this as an example. This thing was just six inches long or two foot long. You could put the tacks a lot closer together, but since this is new material, I figured I'd try them, you know, inch, inch and a half apart. So when I weld this, I first hit it with the tiger paw to knock off the, the high spots on the tacks. And then I'll start here. Then I go all the way to the end and then I'll come back to the middle. And that'll help any distortion or any warping. So hopefully this, this helps you, you guys out there because I know somebody in America right now it's got an Everlast machine. I don't know about the Harbor Freight wire in it, if they have that, but I know they're using 7525 at home trying to weld some sheet metal. It's go everybody does it. You know, and you can use this for an example too, for replacing panels on your car and stuff. If I was replacing panels on the car, I'd have my tacks about a half inch apart. So when you weld it, you only weld a half inch at a time, and then you skip around whatever you're welding. You don't stay right in the same area. That'll keep it from warping and distorting and all that. So let's get started.
So as you can see, I showed you what the whale looks like with a nice fit up. And it come out really nice. Nice and consistent, even though I stopped twice. So now we're going to show you a bad fit up and weld it out. So just a little side joke. You know, I'm into pipe fitting and all that pipe welding mainly. And you usually have a fitter. So I bought this hood right here with the eyeball on it. So that eyeball is constantly watching that fitter. And you know what? I'm going to fire the helmet because the eyeball wasn't watching that fit. That's a bad fit. So when I proceed with this, I got a tack on each end, as you've seen. And what I'm going to do to fix it, I'll, I'll try to get tacks, like get every half inch apart, and then weld in between the tacks. So that's how I'll fix it. I'm sure the audience has got three, five, ten different ways of how to fix it, but I'm just going to show you how I do it the easiest way that I know. So as you can see, I got the tacks very, very close to, to one another. And the bigger the gap got, the closer I put the tacks. And I didn't even have to mess with the heat. So now I'm gonna continue to finish this off. So I got them both done. Got the second one polished up with a grinder, which took three times as long. But I got them both side by side here. And you can tell the nice fit up one because I left it, I didn't grind the weld or anything because you don't have to. And it come out really nice. Tied in, tied in, the tie ins are really good. So the second one here, the eyeball on the hood got fired. I had to run him off. So I had to weld this thing up and I wasn't real happy with it. But just to go to show you, if you take your time, and just like I said earlier in this video, if you got a boatload of patience, because you're going to need them messing with this stuff with gaps and if you don't get a good fit up, but you can achieve a very good quality looking weld. Well, you don't even see the weld anymore because I had to grind it off, but you can achieve really nice quality stuff. You know, even though if you have a bad fit up, take your time, let it cool between the tacks when you're welding it. And then of course you're going to have to grind it because it looks ugly. And you guys out there know a good fit up goes a long way because it's a lot easier to weld. So the next joint we're gonna do, as you can see, is called a lap joint. And this is my favorite joint to weld because it's flat and it's easy. So everybody out there likes easy and so do I. And another thing is too, the eyeball was watching the fitter on this one. So that's why there's a good fit up. So what I'll do is I'll tack it up. And like I did before, I'll put four or five tacks on it and then I'll weld in between the tacks. So we started out with the preset on the corner joint, which I didn't like, it wasn't hot enough. So we jacked it up a little bit, kept the same wire speed, which was 155 inches per minute and jacked the volts up to 18 volts. So now we got the lap joint and I turned it up to 18 and a half volts at 170 inches per minute on the wire speed. And I readjusted the thickness on the metal thickness. So I went to eighth inch. So let's get to welding it out. So I said a few minutes ago that I was going to weld this segment. I'm going to go ahead and weld this end segment to keep the heat, the heat transfer down. So you don't have to worry about warping and all that stuff. So I should have did that in the first place and told you that. But anyway, I made the mistake this time. So anyway, I'm going to do this last segment and then go back here and then do that. As you can see in the in the camera there, when I was welding, I was using that little whip motion, quick and quick and fast, quick and fast. So hopefully that helps you guys out. Your little tips, and you know it depends on the angle of the gun. You know you don't you don't want to tilt it back too far. You kind of want to angle it in and just use quick little whips to uh, tie it into the other piece of metal. And you can see it's uh, 
I mean, just like I said in the beginning of the video, I don't expect to get a picture perfect x-ray looking well, you know, but I'm doing the best I can with what I got. So now we're going to go to the T-joint and then we'll close this thing out. As you can see, I got the T-joint tacked up. So I got four tacks on this and the T-joint holds the heat pretty good because you can turn it up a little bit more and you got somewhere to push that metal up onto, you know what I'm saying? So you can spread it out a little bit. Compared to a lap joint, you don't really have, you know, the lips only the thickness of the material, so you have nowhere really to wash it up on. This is what I did for the lap joint, and it, and I want some more heat, so in order to turn it up more, I could go through all them settings, but I'm just going to keep it simple. Just turn the power set off. I'm going to go to 19 and a half and go to about 180 inches a minute. So we'll see how that runs. All right, so you'll, you, you'll see in, in the video on the arc shots, when I start this, I don't start on my tack. I'll start back here, make sure that wire's hot, and drag it into that tack because I didn't, I didn't prep the tack and knock it down or anything. So I'm just tying into the existing tack without knocking the, knocking the height off of it or anything or knocking the thickness out of it. So hopefully it'll tie in good, and uh, we'll check it out. So as you can see, all four pieces come out pretty good to me, especially, you know, me welding thin, thin material that I'm not used to welding, but I'm getting more used to it. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I had fun doing it. So be sure to connect with us directly at weld.com and download our app, Weld, W-E-L-D. You'll make valuable industry connections. Check out e-learning with educational curriculum developed by professionals for beginners, intermediate and advanced skill advancement. Showcase your work, business, and much more. Join the global welding community at well.com and see you on the next one.